Hey everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, AKA The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. All right, so today's episode, we're going to be talking about creating a story, creating a storyboard for your product photos. Uh, our guest, uh, she focuses on helping Amazon sellers build out not just a product slide deck, but tells the story. So this is a returning guest. Our guest today is going to be Taylor Boone. So she's going to be diving deep into how she sets up Amazon listings. But before we get to that, I want to give a big thank you to our sponsor, Global Wired Advisors, a leading digital investment bank focused on optimizing the business sales process. For more information, call Chris and his team over at Global Wired Advisors. Now, just before we get into Boy Wonder, um, we have, there is, uh, Wilfred Lightheart called, called me the other day, and we've talked about this a variety of times on the podcast, and that's ADA compliance. Uh, he's put together a special um, website where his ADA compliance plugin used to cost about $348 for a year, and he's running it at $97. Now, I don't have an affiliate for it. I have nothing to do with it, but if you go to my uh, web pages like PR Reach or Honu, you'll see that we do this. ADA compliance is a killer. You have to have it. And unfortunately, there are tons of people who know the loopholes and they go after small business owners who have websites. So um, there is a reason for it. You know, that it, 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 it's, it's so important that we can provide services for people um, who have disabilities. So anyways, check it out. Uh, it's, um, it, Kelsey, you've got the, uh, the, the link there, but just click on it and you'll see that's $97. Now, if you go to Shopify, you'll see that you can get, um, get the app, uh, for free, not this app, but apps for free, but this gives you a much wider, broader, um, coverage. So just check it out. Again, I don't have an affiliate, but check it out. I know that uh, even for one of our websites, we're going to take advantage. And I've had to pay full pop for it as well. So anyways, um, I'm going to take advantage of that $97 on a new website that uh, Tim and I are putting up fairly soon. So it's good timing. Thank you, Wilford Lightheart. Now, Boy Wonder, where are you? Hello. You're there. Happy Friday. Yes, yes, of course I'm here. Uh, you sound everyone. closer to me than ever. I know it's weird. It's like I'm right above you. It, it almost is. <laughs> yeah. But uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to the show. Hello, Manny. We've got Victor, Marsha, Roslins, AMZ Elites. It's going to be a good one. I'm super excited. I love uh, hearing about product photography and uh, building stories uh, behind it. So. Uh, if you have any questions for Taylor, she's on, been on before, but you can throw those over into the comment sections. Um, also, of course, smash those like buttons, get those thumbs up going in the comment section. Um, and yeah, let us know where you're watching from. Do you have any weekend plans? Put them on in the comment section. Welcome Olga, Daniel, all the way from Brazil. Uh, it's great seeing everyone and hope everyone is doing well. Um, I also want to just mention that we're kind of planning a 200th episode special and that's going to be with our beard nation members we're going to do a little contest so if you are interested if you want to be on the show um, check out our facebook group in the next couple of weeks we're going to be posting more information and that's lunch with norm amazon fba and e-commerce collective uh, and we'll get that started and if you're interested if you if you think that's a good idea uh, let us know in the comment sections too and if you're new to the show, our podcast happens every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube, on Facebook, and on LinkedIn, too. So for all highlights, go over to YouTube, and uh, it's going to be a fun episode. We got Mohammed from Pakistan, AMZ from London. Everyone is here. All right. And I think that's it. Welcome, welcome. And yeah. All right. Get, go. Go. 
There we go. Okay, so now we can start. I didn't even know we were doing a 200th episode. Thank you, Kelsey, for telling me. Anyway, uh, if you have questions, throw them over to the right-hand column. We'll try to get to them. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, enjoy the show. Marsha Reese was the person who introduced me to Taylor. I just saw a message. I can't read it, unfortunately. Kelsey will will read it, (laughs) I think. Anyways, uh, Taylor, where are you? I'm here in beautiful, sunny California. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know what AMZ Elite was saying. I guess uh, it's, it must be raining out in London right now. But uh, anyways, yeah, we're sunny here in uh, just north of Toronto as well. So we're good to go. Okay, Taylor, so for those of us who don't know you or, um, or who don't know you, can you explain who you are and what you do? Yes, I'm Taylor Boone. I am a photographer, commercial photographer, and been doing this for 25 plus years. I stopped counting after 25 because it leads to me counting gray hairs after that. (laughs) And uh, I'm a storyteller by by heart, and I'm a storyteller through my lens. Now, I'm that's interesting that you say that because a lot of people wouldn't think of photography. Well, I guess it would be uh, like storytelling, but the way we're talking about it today is the storyboard, right? And that that's so different than going out there and just capturing a, a photo and telling that story. This, um, I'm curious, out of your experience, how important is that storyboard, doing it properly on Amazon? It's vital. It It's so vital because from a content creator, I need to understand what the what the product owner developer or creator sees because i again from as from a business we always see what we see right we see from our perspective but we don't see what the consumer needs to see to actually buy the product so understanding what the product developer creator has and then understanding what the consumer needs to have you know to buy the product there's a chemistry there's a psychology that needs to take place in that and that's truly the storyboard is figuring out, you know, what do you see? This is what I see as the creator. And then who's your avatar? Who, who's, who are you selling to? And what do they need to see to actually buy this product? And we buy it based off of emotions. You know, I always, I, I kind of go back to my r- rule of thumb, but we've got to understand the consumer's brain, first of all, before we even start thinking about images. We need to figure out when they go to Amazon, what are they looking for? What do they need to see? Because no one wants to be sold to, but yet everybody wants to buy. And Amazon has proven that over the last, what, 19, 20 months, seeing it increase every single month on the revenue and owning that marketplace. We all know people want to buy. And a confused mind won't buy. And it's so easy to, when we see that photo, we get confused. And then we just scroll to the next one and scroll to the next one. So we really want that first image to grab their attention. You know, it's funny that you you talk about confusion, all right? These orange light bulbs that surround me, you know, I don't know if you can see the orange cast. But anyways, I searched on Amazon the other day because one went out and I was trying to find the better light bulb. First of all, I was looking at uh, the cost and I'm in the game. And but I wanted a good light bulb. So I spent a couple dollars more on the light bulb, even though it's probably made by the same manufacturer. But going back to what you're talking about with confusion, I looked at the uh, images. And so okay, everybody has that, you know, primary image, they all kind of looked consistent. But then these light bulb manufacturers, some of them were writing books, they're writing paragraphs. And what you said was confusion is absolutely true. I didn't want to read a book. I wanted to read that in the bullet points. I wanted to see just one or two words describing, yes, it is orange. Yes, it it is this wattage. And that would have made me just buy, and that's what ended up making me buy the one because first of all, the photos were better quality. Second of all, they just made sense. And third, it was more expensive, if that makes sense. I don't know if that's just me, but you know, those three things go together. Totally. And you're totally speaking my language of my biggest frustration as a consumer. 90% of what I buy, I live in Santa Cruz and Santa Cruz, very local. So there's not for me to find a camera store. I've got to travel two hours. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to Amazon. So 90% of my equipment I buy from Amazon and I get incredibly frustrated when I just want to see 
what is what problem is this going to solve for me? Is what bag is this going to fit in? Right, because I'm going on location. I need to know, you know, is this friendly? Is there a battery? What do I need to use this product? I'll go look at, and there'll be one or two photos, and they'll be blurry and out of focus. So as a photographer, I'm like, so you're not taking a great photo <laughs> of a product you're selling to photographers. There's problem number one. And two, you're not giving any information and or you give that information over here on the side and I have to read half a novel to find out if this is going to fit in my travel bag that I have to get on a plane. And it's, it's so easy to make those that convey super quick. What, what is this going to be if I'm going to read it and what is this going to be if I buy it? And it's, it's images and now more than ever, video content really matters. I honestly, as a consumer, I'm not speaking as a photographer now, I'm speaking the consumer that buys on Amazon. If there's not a video, I'll scroll to the next product that has a video because I want to see this in motion. I want to know how am I going to use this product? What problem is this going to solve in my life? And how am I going to use it? Now, uh, I went through school for um, video and photography, but I don't use it. I like I, I I used to do it 20, 30 years ago, but I kind of left that business. But I still kind of set up and I have my uh, my uh, my tent with a little roundabout, a couple of lights that I can, you know, just do some quick uh, videos. But even me, I'm in the, I was in the business. I'm not in the business anymore. I have to think about it. Yes, you can do it and you can absolutely do this yourself and do it for free. And there's a lot of uh, niches that you, you look, there's no video on the, the listing at all. None of your competitors. So be the first. And sometimes you can get away with that. But if I like our, our knife category, if you start looking at those knives now from, you know, Dell Strong and all these other ones, they are incredible quality and if i come out with a light tent with a roundabout showing my knife uh, with poor lighting not a great lens um, shadows in the background it's not gonna sell you know and you have to take a look at your niche and again it comes down to product it comes down to price and competition but you can do it yourself but like i said even me i'm i'm that's that was my bag and I decide, no, I'm not touching this thing. Let somebody that's a professional that does it every day do it. Um, I don't know. Like, you know, I eat my words too, because you can go back and depending on the niche, you can take that iPhone that you have and you can pretend you're a photographer or a videographer um, and you could get away with it in some cases. In some cases, people do like it better because especially with some lifestyle photos, they want that candid Instagram look, right? Well, and, and everything you just said really goes back to the storyboard. So again, when we, we're looking at that storyboard, we're looking at you know images first. What's the standard we need for Amazon for your listing? Where can we bring in some lifestyle shots that might have a model, might have an, you know, and I tend to do work for a more luxury product. So we know we're speaking to someone that's wants to see how this is going to be used. They want that luxury. feel, so we have to have that in our lifestyle images, but then we want the candid images. Like how is someone using this that just bought this product, you know, and there's a, a client we worked with where we, we thought, okay, we're going to stage this through the storyboard. You need great, great images that really make this product stand out on white. So let's do that. Now let's create some really dialed in stylized lifestyle shots that are really going to speak to the consumer that's going to drop a you know a couple zeros to buy this product on Amazon. And now let's go into someone's home that's using this product from their cell phone taking photos of them using this product. And that I mean their business just scored big time through showing that because again it's the story. They're telling a story about that product and I think sometimes when we look at a product we go what's the story? There's always a story. There's a story to every single product. And that's part of my philosophy is figuring out what does the consumer need to see and then conveying that because I want to take what the client wants and what I see as a creative and kind of combine those two. But we've got to figure out what does the consumer need to see. And we've got to be flexible. I always tell my clients, we've got to be Gumby because what you and I think we might feel like is the right thing, once we start doing the storyboard, we might have the aha moment where we're like, we're completely wrong. 
we need to do a 360 and actually do the, the photos from this angle. You know, and it and a lot of it is figuring out the psychology of who your customer is, what do they want to see, and what are they looking at? And we, we're inundated with, on social media, with all these ads, what are they looking for? What makes someone want to like a product or go deeper into it? Taking that psychology into how we're going to make this product stand out on Amazon is key when we're creating that storyboard. Very good. Uh, before we get into any other questions, uh, I forgot to announce that we do have a giveaway today. So, Taylor, if you'd like to uh, just explain what the giveaway is all about. It's a consultation. So, our, anytime a client approaches us and wants help, we give them a consultation. It's a $200 value. And we basically go through their listing. It can either be a current listing they have that they feel like they're not getting the traction they want to have. Or it can be a new product that they're like, they're not sure where they should be going. So we kind of go through basically kind of mapping out a, a, a storyboard. It's not the actual storyboard, but it's a bridge to that. And the philosophy of, of image they, they need to be considering, the text they need to be considering, and that what's the overall, who's their competition and how are we going to leverage them? Again, like you were just saying, you, we've got many options on Amazon to buy from others, but what's going to make them buy from you? So that's part of the consultation we're giving one away today. All right, fantastic. And I'm going to sneak something else in too. So during the giveaway, Kelsey doesn't even know about this yet, but during the giveaway, if anybody would be interested in a one month free Centurion League membership, that's $200, um, we're going to be giving that away as well. So there's two because it's Friday. Uh, so just hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. If you want to be entered twice, then tag two people either on this channel or uh, just invite somebody else or tag somebody outside. Okay, so Kelsey, get that ready. I didn't tell you about that. Um, so we should have a different hashtag for that in case someone has one over the other. So let's do- uh, You make things so difficult. Hashtag, uh, I don't know, hashtag uh, mentorship for the Centurion League, okay? Nice and easy. I keep, I keep things simple, Taylor. Kelsey likes to mess things up. One of the, I saw a comment here, and I don't know if Kelsey, if you can find it, um, but Muhammad was talking about the best ratio was one to one, uh, 1.15, I think it said. Um, I'm not sure about that. I was just kind of curious about what you thought. And I think that's what the ratio was. I think it depends on the product, actually. I, I think it, it it depends on the it depends on the product really like is that going to weigh in and help or is that going to defeat right yeah that that is true and also uh just before we this affects a storyboard but are you doing a lot for mobile optimization right now or are you still doing the square thousand by thousand we're doing a little bit of both so again depending on the product and what mm -hmm. we're seeing the traction that's going to work best for their category okay storyboard i i see this uh, especially in supplements you know or anything that you have a capsule um just to give you an example a st what we're talking about a storyboard is to get that consumer feel good you know the warm and fuzzies the engagement uh, giving them what they want giving them you know the the benefits of the product or the ingredients um somebody mm -hmm. using them what we're not talking about, and I, a lot of newer sellers will do this on their own, but they'll take a straight on um, image of their product. They'll take it with the cap off. They'll take it with ca the capsules on, you know, on the bottom with the cap off. They'll do a backside. They'll do it on the side to show, you know, the label. Nobody is interested in that. You know, you can take that front shot either with or without packaging. Um, and then you can look at, uh, at least for me, I like to look at the bullets before I, I do anything. How do you come up with the storyboard and is it a hundred percent the same every time? It's never the same. So again, I'm going to use a product. We had to do the side shot and the back shot and the warning and all of that in those images for me as a creative, that wasn't very creative. I'm like, turn it, click, turn it, click. But then I was able to talk to the client, I'm like, okay, I get that your category, we need to have that be the first three images, right? Because there's things on this product we've got to make sure the consumer's aware of. But let's, and they they had an idea that their, their avatar was a man. 
And after we looked at the product, it says, no, your client's a woman. Your client's a woman and she's the one buying this product for everybody in her family. And she's going to gift this product and it's going to become what she's going to make sure her daughter has. And so the next part of that storyboard was how does that mom need to see to, to make that her thought process that this, I need everyone in my family to have this and I need all my friends to have this and I need to make sure my daughter has this. So during that thought process is when we went deeper in the storyboard and we're figuring out, okay, this is what we need for images. And out of that, we created a video and that business saw a huge increase based off of just going a little bit deeper. We went a little deeper than what was the typical. This is what everybody else was doing in your category. This is the safe area, right? And we always want to be safe, but where can we go that the consumer can actually see this and we're planning thoughts in their head without even saying anything. They're seeing this and going, oh, I just thought of four people I need to buy this. And doing that, they were like, we weren't selling one product anymore. Our average cart now is four, four pieces because we're showing that in the next image, why that consumer needs more than just one. And I think that's a part of the storyboard that we want to always go by the Amazon rules. Mm -hmm. And then the rebel in me that doesn't like to play by too many rules wants to stretch and go, where can we go with this? That's not going to cause you any harm on Amazon, but where can we go with this deeper in the, in the image and the content we're creating to really convey a message, why they're going to stop and want your product versus the other maybe five or six in your category what makes you stand out what really what comes down to your credibility right we're all we all have this measuring stick inside that we're looking at the credibility of a product and so it is it's so key on that storyboard to figure out that second step right uh, i mean the first the very first step that with that product image mm -hmm. is take a look at your um search results see if everybody uh, brian johnson was on showing shoes and they were all pointing right and so the rebel in him had one turn left and it made a huge difference you know just turning it left if, if it's a knife if everybody's going left to right top right go the opposite way that way you break the pattern and people will will notice we recently did something with um with candles and we were looking at candles and we noticed that um we, we could either do it with the package, but we wanted to fill the frame and the package stopped us from doing that. So we removed the package and we just did, um, it was 1000, it was square, 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels and nobody else was doing it. It didn't fill the frame. So ours went from being smaller to being larger. And it, I mean, the, they were metallic as well. So we did incredible photography. So it got people's attention and, um, you know, it just looked different. It stopped the person from looking down the page and went, oh, you know, take a look at this one. So that I think is very important and having high quality images as your primary. But let's talk about the, the next images. What are some uh, some different content that people can use in this storyboard? Where should they start? I think really looking at one, if there's competition, always look at what they're doing and what you can be doing different. I love looking at what people are complaining about a, a product that's in that similar category. What does, what is the, what are they seeing? They're not, they're complaining about and how are you going to solve that? So that's not a complaint you have on your product. Those are two things I like to look at. And then I, again, I'm going through the psychology of a consumer and I'm using a woman 35 to 55 years old that when she sees a product on Amazon <clears throat> and it's not a cheap product, it's a, you know, it's a, a privacy product, they're going to go look at the store and see if they actually have a store presence on Amazon. And then when they go there, they're going to go over to their search engine and type in that website, for that business and see if they have a website. And then they're going to scroll and they tend to scroll to the bottom of the website and look for the social media channels. And they're going to go pick their playground. And when I'm talking about playground, there's people like Facebook, there's people like Twitter, Instagram and Pinterest, they're going to find the playground they like, the consumer likes to play in and go see if you're playing in it. So for me, I'll go to Instagram and COVID really taught us all this, that if I go to Instagram and you haven't posted anything, I think you're closed or out of business because we saw so many businesses leave that when we see there's no activity on Instagram, I think, oh, they're gone. But if I see there's some engagement and there's some photos, I'm going to scroll and I'm looking for me in this. So as I'm scrolling through their social media, I'm looking for someone that's a consumer like me that likes the product. What is somebody else saying about the product? 
what is the product saying about the product? And then I'm going to go back to buying from Amazon because Amazon is my trusted partner. I don't have to put my credit card information in there. I don't have to put my shipping information in there. It's safe and easy. So I'm going to go buy it from them. But that's the psychology. So when we're looking at how do we go a little bit deeper, there's all those elements I want to look at and go, okay, what is someone in your category doing? What should we be doing? And what can we do that's different? And a lot of my clients don't want to do different right away. They want to start, okay, I'll be a little bit rebellious. I'll squeak in a couple shots. And then once I get that trust, the, usually the second and third time they come back and hire me, it's we trust you. We don't even need to be in the car with you. You just drive the car where you, it should go. You know, and I always want my clients at the, at the end of the day, look at what we've done. Are you good with this? Because I want you to be able to stand behind it. I don't want to go too far down the road without them. But I want that trust that we, we are always stretching to see where we want to go. We're not completely rebellious and do a 360 right out the, the door. But what can we what can we get away with with one or two images that's a little different? Just like going from right to left. What's the one thing that's going to stop the mind? Because if I'm scrolling, again, my thumb is scrolling, what what can I do to make my thumb stop? Actually click on this, actually open this up and see, is this a product for me? One of the uh, things I look at too, when I'm creating that storyboard, if you're looking at the slide deck, so you know, for the most part, it's just running down across the bottom, left to right, you know, there's seven images. And sometimes I'll, I'll take this, I'll put this on pick foo and I'll take the seven images and I'll give eight different scenarios and people will check which one they like the best. I get an idea. So sometimes I'll see that it's all white. It'll be the white background with the package or sorry, the, the product then the white background with the, the package then another white, and then they get dark, 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 and it doesn't look right. Uh, it just like when somebody sees it, it just aesthetically sucks. You know, and if you change it around to a white, dark, white, dark, or whatever it is, sometimes that's enough for people to, to check, you know, the image or putting a feature like you're, um, you were talking about uh, a problem. Okay, so going and seeing what your problems are uh, with your competition, if you can take that and hit that as your second image. And, you know, this is the feature, it's more, um, uh, it's more sturdy or it's, uh, it's got a, I'm, I, I'm thinking of one right now. It has a better, uh, reinforced handle. You know, I know that we did garden shears and the garden shears, people were complaining about the string, uh, the, the lock, very important and also the spring. And so we went in and we focused on that and, you know, just put, uh, from the, and that was directly in our first or second bullet, but that it had a heavy duty spring and it had a safety lock, you know, because of the, you know, you don't want to get cut with garden shears, but anyways, these are things that you brought out. And then we looked at other benefits that could happen and the benefits would, would just be, you know, very, very, it's not your bullet. It's just a couple of words. And on another note, uh, we used in, um, how to put something on and this was a charcoal um, a face wash it was just to show somebody in like six words how to how to use you know apply to hand moisten apply to face scroll you know, rub in or whatever it was and enjoy so the word enjoy was the engaging part you know, and, and you know, just went on and then it went to lifestyle. This was for men's grooming. So you saw, you know, the, 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 uh, the demographic, um, the persona who was using the product, who liked the product. It wasn't a stock photo either. So I, I don't know if you use any of those as well, but, um, I, that's how I like to build up my storyboard. Totally. And, and it's the value piece. It's always, we go back to the value. What's the value your product offers over somebody else's and, the other key thing, we've got to strike an emotion. We are human beings and we're different from any other species out there because we carry all these emotions. And you strike an emotion with me, you've got my attention and you solve a problem I didn't even know I had, you've got my attention. And I always look at, when we build our storyboards, I always look at, and I'm not a Star Wars fan, so don't hate me. I just, I just could never get into Star Wars. But when I'm looking at, building a storyboard, I always go back to George Lucas. Let's talk about Luke Skywalker, his, his journey. 
let's talk about Walt Disney. You know, here's a great storyteller. These are two great storytellers that just taking some fundamentals that they've made, you know, a billion dollar industry off of and bringing that into your own product and figuring out again, what's the story? There's a story to this product. I don't care if it's a toothbrush, there's a story to this toothbrush and what makes this toothbrush brush better and what emotion can you show me? You know, and I think it was years ago, I, I remember seeing a toothbrush ad and the guy brushing his teeth looked like he was hurting. Like he just, you know, and it was a fake smile, but he was trying to look like he enjoyed it. And I was like, wow, that, that toothbrush is harsh. Like it, it hurts versus you see someone with a big, big smile and they're brushing their teeth. They're enjoying their life. Razors. I always tell clients, go watch a razor ad, you know, shaving. Again, everyone's got to do it. But how do you make that interesting? And how do you tell a story that someone needs this razor? There's a billion razors out there there's a story to it and figuring out that story brings the market value to you. You know, you just reminded me of um, a very unsexy product, HDMI cables. We made HDMI cables sexy. Like the, the photos were incredible. Um, and how like the pain point were gamers, they wanted the best. And you're just not going to get the best if you don't have a gold connected like it, it was uh what is it a gold plated um uh hdmi cable so the connectivity was that much better i could never tell but anyways the, you know that was the pain point that if you're a gamer and you're not using this you're just not getting the quality and they were very successful and the other thing that we did is we we showed people what it was used for so yeah, you could do HDMI, here's another, here's another, here's six foot, here's 15 foot. But at the end of the day, what could I use this for? What, how could I replace them? And um, anyways, we did that and we, we actually, sh we, like we did, um, we showed a lot of different ways that you can use HDMI um, or even stocking stuffers, like gifting stocking suffers was a biggie at christmas time it was huge for us you know with with these hdmi but it was telling that story and making hdmi sexy and one other thing that you mentioned the search people will go down to a plus they will go to the store and what you said about um consistency or going over to your website makes a huge difference if you can't be that authority either in the images, so people don't trust your images on Amazon, and they see that you're not the player, the big player, because they don't think you're the authority, and that starts with the images, then they don't trust you and you don't get the sales. That simple. It is, it's credibility. Everything we do is on, we're looking for something that's credible. You know, if I'm going to consume a product in my body, I want to make sure it's credible. If I'm going to put, you know, something on my dog, I want to make sure it's credible and it's not going to fall apart. Everything we do where we want it to be credible and poor images make people bounce faster than anything, you know, and again, looking and going, okay, who else is using this product? Is there someone out there that looks like me, sounds like me using this product and enjoying it? You know, and again, it's, we're, we're measuring everything on the credibility of a product and is showing that and answering that as quickly as we can, because if they're clicking on your product, going to your website, going to your social media channel and coming back to Amazon, they're pretty much in the bag. You're, they're carrying you out to come home, you know? Right. But if we lose any of that and your, your competitors doing that, then it's like the highway is just, you know, your, your street became a dead end and now everyone's going off. The highway's taking me here. So I'm going to go this direction and I'm going to go buy my product. We all have competition. You know, I come from an industry where I'll never forget I was asked to, to speak in Denver. And one of the topics was how many photographers were in eight miles of my studio. I thought in my head, oh, there's probably a couple hundred. There was 30,000 photographers that were registered within eight miles. And when I did that, and when I went and started looking, because that took me down a wormhole, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go look at all these businesses. 80% of them didn't even have a website. So I was like, okay, so you're not real. Credibility, right? I just realized you're not real because you don't have a website. And then out of that, it, it dropped down to who actually had social media channels. Again, credibility, you're not real. 
and all based off of research I had to do for a talk. So when I think about the consumer, again, whatever they're doing, they're always looking what else is out there, who else is out there, and how do I keep them in my lane? I want them to stay in my lane so they buy from me. So there's, there's so many things that go on. And that's why I, I tend to read a lot of psychology books because I want to understand how we think. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like the more we understand how we think, the more I can help business with their product. And our number one goal is that, that company keeps coming back to us to keep building their library of content because they're seeing the wins. You know, and that's the biggest thing for us to see a win. I can't hold my camera and take a great photo and have a win. I need to make sure what I'm creating regardless if it's a photo or a video, is actually going to serve the purpose of this product. And more importantly, is it serving the consumer that sees this because they're basing their decision off of what they're seeing and reading. And we want to make sure that everything we're doing is credible. Very good. So before we get um, to any more of my questions, if you do have a question, please put it into the uh, comment section. And as I mentioned before, We've got a great giveaway today. So that's hashtag we love Kelsey. That's a consultation with Taylor. And we've also got a secondary giveaway and that's a month long membership uh, over at the Centurion League. And that's worth a $200 value. And that is hashtag mentorship. If you tag two people, you'll get a second entry. So keep that in mind and please throw us as many questions as you want about photography or video. Let's talk about video for a second. Uh, you've got your slide deck. Now putting together your video, are you taking the same elements of your uh, photos and featuring features or benefits? Are you just um, transitioning, fading in, fading out? Like, What do you do uh, in your video? Is it just taking a picture of the product or are you highlighting everything you've done in your slide deck? Oh. We do a lot of things. Sometimes we do that. It all depends on the client's budget. Sometimes we'll do a lifestyle photo shoot and a video at the same time. We're actually showing this product in use. Um, again, it comes back to that storyboard. What are the missing elements that in 30 seconds can convey on that video? Who needs this product and who am I buying this for? I'm always thinking the two that's the multi-factor. I want to make sure that the client's buying this product for themselves, but they're buying a second or third one. So what can we show them in 30 seconds that would make them want to do that? Um, you know, one of the products we had, and you had mentioned, uh, was showing that the competition, a lot of people were returning or saying that the handle was, was not a great piece. One of the video clips we took was actually a model, an actress holding the product, using it with, the, the piece on the competitors that wasn't working, but they have mastered theirs. And we really zoomed in uh, and we do a lot of, I uh, use a lot of cinematography lenses. So we zoom in and the product and that piece of, of that product that was a problem on the competition, this company made this a solution and we focused on that. And then we pulled back. So now there's, we call it the, the micro shot where you, we go in tight on that. We do the cowboy shot, which is all law and order. If you watch SVU, you know the, the cowboy shot is the tight end shot and then the pulled back. We did that so they could actually see the consumer that's holding this and how they're holding and using the product. So, again, we're always looking at how deep can we go on this video and what does this video need to convey because we have just seconds. You know, we went from attention spans as human beings uh, – Goldfish had the attention span of eight seconds. Humans had the attention span of six. And scary fact here, since 2020, humans have gone down to three seconds because during the pandemic, we turned to our phones and we numbed out. And that's caused our attention span to even drop. So in a 30 second or 20 second video, we know we've got three seconds to really just grab that person until they'll hang on and get through the message. Even commercials on TV now are down to 10 and 15 seconds. So we're always trying to figure out what can we squish in there, that video that really, it's gonna make your product stand out and stand out from the competition and show the solution. You know, um, if you wanted to get a great example of this, especially, you know, the mind of a goldfish, try watching TV with Kelsey. <laughs> really? Oh, Is he a ding. He's peeping. You can't even like. As soon as somebody opens his mouth, he's on to the next commercial or on to the next program. But anyways, that's Kels. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, so you were talking about with video. Um, oh gosh, he's gonna come back at me. I know. Anyways, um, do you do a lot of motion, panning, yes. tilting? Yeah, moving so, in. It's yeah, all not motion. so much static shots. Yeah, it's there's always got to be motion to it. You know, it's, right. we've got we've got to be creating that emotional feel, either pulling them in or pushing them back. And we, when we're finished with the video, as a team, we'll watch it. And now we, of course, we do it on our Zoom calls as a team. But I'm watching the room, going, how many went like this, and how many went like this, and how many didn't move. If nobody moves, the video is a failure. We've got to start over. You know, if half the team leans in and goes, I'm like, okay, this is good. And if some of the team leans back and goes, then I'm like, okay, this is a winner. So it's, again, we're watching that emotional and it's all through the movement of what we're doing on that video. Are we pulling the audience in and making them want to be a part of this? We pulling them in. So they're so excited. They want to have this product today. Okay. I, I know. And I'm just going to flip back. This all comes back to lighting, but, um, I, I had a product. I'm going to go back to this, um, uh, the garden shears and we saw what the photographer had provided and they looked okay. They, they looked okay, but they were flat. And when we went and did the product photography, it was just some simple things, proper lighting. The lighting made the metal pop. Now you, you work with Marsha on her stay well copper and it's so important. It's like food. Like you ever seen horrible food pictures where somebody's taking an iPhone and, and it doesn't look like food. It looks like plastic. Well, it's the same with metal. Metal's very hard to, uh, to take a photo of. And the lighting made this gray metal pop. And the lighting also just had a light ridge on the handles. Again, it just, it, it makes that big of a difference. And Kevin King talks about going to a photographer where he'll pay, you know, a thousand bucks or 2000 bucks to get the best photos. And that's what you do when you go to a product photographer, a real product photographer, um, you pay a little bit more, uh, but you get some great photos. Now there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of um, agencies out there that might do it for less and that's fine. But um, yeah, just make sure that you're looking for like, true product photographers that can provide you with a nice portfolio. And it is so key that it is about the lighting. It's all about the lighting. Every movie you see, there's a scene that you're pulled into. There's something emotional happening. So the room gets quiet and everyone's watching. That scene wouldn't work if the lighting was off. That scene yeah. loses the value. And I even look at you and go, okay. And I'm always, I, my family hates me for this, but I can't watch a movie, a TV show without figuring out the lighting, figuring out the lens, what kind of filter, what puts this. And even when you popped up, I was like, okay, I know where his lights are. He's got great red lighting on the side. So that's good. That's bringing in a little flavor. And I think that's a part where it makes it interesting. If you just had one light on you, it no. would be interesting. Yeah. You know, and it's and usually when we do a product, there's a product we were shooting that was about three inches. And to shoot this product, we used six different lights and we had lighting coming from every angle because I'm like, this little product is going to blend into the white background and be lost. We've got to make this product stand out. We need to make this a superhero shot. And how do we make this, you know, little tiny product look like a superhero shot? We know what lens we're going to do. We know what le uh, angle we're going to hold the camera. But then the second thing is, how are we going to light this? And how do we light this and stand back? And all of our cameras are, are wired to a bigger screen because I want to look at it on the big screen. I always pretend like if this is my movie <laughs> and this is, you know, what's coming up on the screen, how is this going to look? And it, it is lighting is key. Lighting, you know, Beyonce, Every supermodel can always tell you lighting can make you look pretty and it makes your product look pretty. Do I look pretty? You look really pretty. <laughs> you do. Okay, you're, good, you're, good. I just oh. wanted to make sure my lighting was right. Okay. No, but it's again, the lighting all around you. Do you mean, I, I love it. It's just, it's key to telling that. You know, if I just, just a sec, if I turn off some of the, just, just to show you, I, that's one light. I've got right. six lights around me, but it, it, you know, it all serves a purpose. And one of them is a kicker light, 
which separates me from the background. And this is what you would do in a product photography as well. Like you want to have that back shine, you know, anyways, that's getting a little technical. Do we have any questions, Kelsey? Yes, we have lots and lots and lots of questions. Good, also, good, good. People agree you look very pretty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my right. gosh, I'm blushing. So let's see. I'm going to just jump into some questions uh, from Jessica Rabbit. Do you experiment in an account and perhaps make changes to the listing? If yes, other than number of sales, what other criteria do you use to measure the effectiveness of your listing or changes? So that might be more of a norm question. Or... Yeah, for that, you can always split test. So first thing I'll do is I'll take um, the images. You can go to PicFu or you can go to Usability Hub. And you can see, first of all, what people in your demographic like. Not you, because I'm usually wrong. I'll think that this is the best picture, and then I'll get people to vote on it, and it's like, oh, wow, I, okay, I was wrong there. And um, that's the first thing. If you start to see that, um, let's say that you are you want to play around with, the, with a picture of the product and the package, try that out and see. You can usually you can usually tell within a, a week or so whether your sales are going to be uh, increased or decreased. See what is, you know, see if that works. Sometimes, like for me with packaging, I'll go back to the candles that we were talking about. The package itself made it, it made the product look too small. So we, we increased the size of the candles and decreased the size of the package. And it, that worked out really well as, as well, just doing slight changes like that. It's all about experimenting. And the one of the things I can tell you when you're doing, um, let's say you're doing a cylinder or you're doing those garden shears, take a look, go to a graphic artist and see if they can artificially put that beam of light on or coming down the side so it separates it from being a flat image to something that pops. And then, then you'll see your, you know, usually you, you can see a, a sales jump if you've got a flat image to something that looks better. I agree 100% too. It is about the A-B testing because again, what you like might not be what your consumer needs to see. Okay, uh, next question from Mohammed. Uh, what are your thoughts about 3D rendering images and videos? I, my personal opinion is they look fake and I can usually tell them just, and again, I, I'm coming with an eye of a photographer so I can tell they're fake. It makes me wonder, is the product I'm actually going to receive look like this product? Usually for me, where 3D rendering comes in is on the packaging side. If it's cardboard and I'm sending it to a photographer, some, there's usually something that just doesn't look good. So it might be a wrinkle. It might be, you know, might've been crushed a bit. Um, the cardboard doesn't look right. The lighting or the print across the cardboard is off. So I'll typically I'll go to a 3d rendering company to get that to put in. That would be different than I don't typically do that with uh, the product unless, unless it's something like a pillow or a sheet or not a sheet. Um, uh, just keep to a pillow, but a pillow is very hard to photograph and then to try to get the wrinkles out of it. If you take a look at any of the listings with pillows, for the most part, they're 3D rendered. The only, and you can tell right away because the wrinkled ones are the ones that are photography, photograph without any photo touch ups. Okay, uh, let's see. Next one is from AMZ Elite. Uh, I have a kid's product, sort of a plush bear. Would you push more towards emotions or rather product features? Uh, it has some functionality and I believe it's both. Uh, asking specifically about video. I would do both because again, as, as a parent, I wanna know what are the features, why, what makes this different than any other plush toy out there and safety. You know, we always come down to the safety factor when we're giving anything to our, our kids. How safe is this product? And that can be addressed very easily in a video and not if a feature of the video, but just, you know, addressing that question that a parent's going to have. It's the, 
we think about this, the questions we're not going to ask. How do we address that? And okay. with a plush toy to safety. Okay, uh, from Mohammed, are unboxing videos effective? I think they are. They're very, uh, if, if it's authentic, uh, then it's great. So you can go and you can get an influencer to do it. Um, yeah, and usually an influencer that will do an unboxing video, they'll typically have other unboxing videos, so check it out. But um, let's say that you have on your insert card, uh, you know, tag us, you know, unbox or tag or whatever you want um, and get them to do a video for you. Or if you already have some influencers that are, are helping you out or if you go to, you know, Thomason or a BuzzSumo or something, find an influencer. Um, you can ask kind of specifically what they want. The more authentic, the better. If they start to kind of script it out, people know it's fake. You know, just tell them as soon as you get it, open it up and give us your real reaction. And if and it so, sucks, don't send it. <laughs> right. And I'm so glad you brought up being authentic and keeping it real because the ones that unbox and take five minutes to watch them unbox something, everybody's left the room and they feel like it's so staged and they're they're trying to sell something more versus the excitement of look what just came. I'm unboxing it. I'm pulling it out and I'm off. I'm using this yeah. product. You remember when, uh, Kels, when Sabian, uh, a box of bully sticks came in, right? And oh, the yeah. UPS or the, uh, yeah, UPS driver came in, left the box, picked it up. And my dog just started howling, like just out of the blue, started howling. And he wanted these bully sticks. And uh, he had no idea. We, I had no idea what the package was yet. And uh, he had already known, he already knew it was, uh, it was bullies. It was hilarious. I was able to do a video on it. Yeah, that was great. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, from Rad, uh, is it better to make lifestyle pictures by our manufacturer than doing it in the USA? Hmm. So I guess I'm confused how a manufacturer would do a lifestyle photo. Well, you can get, um, you know, people, depending where you're, you're manufacturing your product, that you can ask them for lifestyle photos like i, I know of uh, uh you know photographers or photography studios in china that do have people uh that'll do lifestyle photos for you and they'll they'll be more like it, they, they won't be a, <clears throat> they won't be chinese and if you're going to china to take products shots and the person's chinese it's unfortunate, but even though you're you're selling it over here, you're going to be looked as a Chinese seller, and that'll have a negative connotation to it. It's a lower perceived value. Okay. Uh, from Amir, some of the sellers present a large main image, but the actual product is small. Uh, how does the strategy work? All right. What was that, Kels? So uh, some of the sellers present a large main image, but the actual product is small. I guess they edit the image to be bigger, or the product to be bigger. Um, how do you find this product, this strategy work? Have you ever it, done it before? Oh, for me, no. I want I want everything that I'm photographing and making to be real. So if we do a hero shot, making that first shot, make this product really stand out that's different than making the product look bigger than it really is because I really believe people should know the dimension and the size of this product and something I was even looking for a product last night on Amazon and every, the, the one that won that got my, my purchase was the one that put a quarter showing the actual print, right? Cause I'm at that age where I don't read this. Do I need my readers? You know, I'm going on a trip. I start questioning all these things, but when they put a quarter next to the print, I could immediately say, okay, this print's actually going to work for me regardless if I have my glasses or not. So it's, it's, again, it depends on the product and what you need to convey. And again, what problem does the consumer have, right? I have the problem of how many glasses do I need to take to read this book and answer my problem, which is a quick image that got my sale. So again, it's, 
there's so much that goes into it. It's a, that's a hard question to answer. Other than I do believe the first shot should always be a hero shot. It should be the one that makes me stop my thumb from scrolling and clicking on the product. And you're always, um, if the person claims that it's not as shown or as described, uh, you could get a problem with Amazon. Big time, yeah. And your consumers aren't going to come back. Don't you want your consumers to come back and buy? Right. You want them to write your review. I want them to, you want them to go become lovers of your products. So it's always honest up front. Okay, uh, next question from Victor. Uh, do you also make videos for Kickstarter campaigns? Yes, we do. Okay, and let me see. Just scrolling through to see if there's any more questions from the top. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, yeah, from Manny. Uh, which order would you prefer for which order would you prefer for pictures? Having the problem of the customer first, or first the benefits, or some other order? I always say the hero shot, the, the shot that would make you pick the magazine up, right? When you're standing at the counter at the checkout store, you pick up a magazine for a reason. Back in the day when we used to buy records, you bought the record, you picked up the record at the record store, be based off the cover. So I believe that first shot has an immense, it's the value in it. Can it be exceeded? It, it can't be blurry. It can't be pixelated. It shouldn't look cheap. It should look sharp and clean because that's my buy in. That's my three second click. And then we figure out what's the next image and then what's the next one and what's the next one. And that again is based off of the storyboard. We go right back to that storyboard and realize on that storyboard, what did we figure out? There was a problem. Is that a problem worth the real estate being the second photo? You know, and even go look at real estate photos. The first photo you ever see of a real estate that shows the bathroom, the house isn't going to sell very quickly. <laughs> you know, you want that first photo to really be like, okay, this is what I would drive up to when I come home, or this is what I would see in my backyard. Same psychology is, is being played in these images. What's going to make me stop and go, wow, what's this product? I want to, I want to buy this. Okay, great. And I think we just have a few more questions. Some of the questions we've answered throughout, like how to differentiate your product. Um, so I'm trying to find the ones that are unique uh, that haven't been answered. Uh, from Jessica Rabbit, your opinion of using animation in a video. There's a good balance there. There's videos that definitely re require and need it. And there's a value of showing the actual lifestyle video in there with animation. So we, we do a little bit of both. And sometimes it, the animations isn't going to help us get the point across so we don't use it. So again, uh, I see value in it, but it's going to work for the product. Okay. And our last question from Asharib. Um, a designer suggests uh, to make the main image vertical 1 to 1.5 instead of square. What's your opinion on that? So you'd oh, have to talk about that a little uh, yeah, at, okay. at the beginning. So okay. that, that was uh, the answer to that very quickly was um, it depends on the product. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. I think that's it for questions. Okay, perfect. Okay. So I guess it's that time. Yes, it's time for the wheel of Kelsey. Uh, here we go. It's time for the wheel of Kelsey. All right, this one is for the Wheel of Kelsey. I'm going to shuffle these up real quick. This is for the consultation. Three, two, one. All right, if you are the winner of the consultation, please email me at kaitlinthedorm.com. AMZ Elite. I think that is a new winner. Very good. So AMZ Elite, please email me k at lunchwithnorm.com. I think they were actually just saying that they've never won before. Uh, so that's pretty funny that they, they got that one. And also last, our Centurion giveaway. Here we go, shuffle these up. All right, three, two, one. 
And the winner is... All right, Faye. Faye, all right. Very good. So uh, with that, just send over your information to Kelsey and we'll provide you with the information over to the Centurion League. I just want to mention <clears throat> that with the Centurion League, it's a free month. You, you'll just enter your information. But if you don't want to continue, make sure that you cancel, okay? I don't want uh, uh, that. Uh, it, the way that it's set up is it'll automatically renew. And I just want you to be 100% aware, okay? Completely transparent. So cancel if you don't want to. Hopefully you don't and you'll love what the information that you'll provide. Also, kind of on the Centurion League note, um, Tim's going to be, Tim Jordan's going to be at ASD next week. I think it's next week. And if anybody's in Las Vegas at that time, you know, make sure you uh, go and introduce yourself. I can't make it, but he, he'll be there. Okay, awesome. Okay, so Taylor, thank you. And how can people get a hold of you if they'd like more information about your service? You can go to just, um, just type my name in Google search, uh, Taylor Boone, T A Y L O R B O O N E dot com. And you can go to my website and my contact sheet is there. And uh, Norm, I just want to thank you for what you've created here. You've been a vital uh, platform for so many people. And you've created such a safe place for people to come and get the information they need to really take that, that nudge they've got for a product. So I have a big heart for what you've created here. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's all Kelsey. <laughs> okay so we are going to be having our, our returning guest uh ryan rigney uh, and we're going to be t discussing this is going to be cool how to transform your e-commerce store we talked about that today how important it is into an iconic brand so it'll be good ryan's always interesting to talk to uh next thing and i know kelsey will remind me about this but it's our episode episode has been sponsored by href and, you know, we always talk about an e-commerce website and how important it is. Well, you got to be found. And if you're not found, you know, using SEO, uh, if you're not using SEO, then that kind of sucks. You'll never be, you know, you'll have an address on a street and nobody's gonna, not going to know how to get there. So anyways, Ahrefs has put together a free tool that will help get you found out. How it does it, it'll go through, it'll scrape your site basically, and it'll take all your information and give you a PDF that you can give to your SEO person to have it optimized. We did a report the other day and it showed that we had about 200 errors on our site. I gave it to our SEO person and we were able to go from six, we had a score of 16 up to 79% on our mobile app, which is great. It made it a lot quicker. Anyways, check out uh, Hrefs. Uh, they have a, uh, the, the Href free tool is at hrefs.com, A-W-T. That's A-H-R-E-F-S dot com slash A-W-T, and it's free. So check it out. All you can do is, you know, get a better performing site, and that's what we need. All right, Kels, where are you? Uh, I'm right here, but actually thinking about it, Faye is part of our Patreon and she actually has the free Centurion League for us already. So I was thinking, throwing you a curveball, and if we should maybe spin again and have a new winner. Well, uh, that's up to up Faye, because she could have a second free month. Okay, all right. No curveballs. Um, okay, all right, all right. I'm just, just testing the waters. But um, okay, I'll talk to Faye if we'll figure something out. But okay. um, yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for watching today's episode. Um, smash those like buttons if you haven't already. I've seen we got lots of engagement, a lot of new listeners today, which is always awesome to see. I know that we've just been getting a lot of great reach from the community. And if you are interested in learning more about Amazon and e-commerce, go over to our Lunch with Norm web, uh, Facebook group. That is Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA, and e-commerce collective. Uh, question to the audience, Kelsey, if I have blue or green eyes, the answer is blue. I have blue eyes. Do you? I, I do. You, what? You don't know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, thank you for joining everyone. If you're looking for highlights, you can go over to our YouTube channel, 
Um, that's just Norm and Ferrar. But if you search Lunch with Norm, you'll be able to find that too. We're closing in on 200 episodes. So we're thinking for the 200th episode to have a big little party, get it to know some of our Beer Nation members. So if you're interested, um, we're going to be posting some info in the next couple of weeks and try to get a bunch of you guys on the show uh, with me and Norm. It's going to be fun. And uh, thank you, everyone, all your comments, Laura, uh, Amir, Amar, Jessica Rabbit, AMZ Elite, all of you guys for showing up. It's always great to see our Beard Nation. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, if you are interested in our membership program, this is new. We started this in June. But um, if you're interested in guest lessons, Q&A sessions with our community it's a very small group just go over to our lunch from our website and uh click the membership area Get okay go. all right i'm going leave okay everybody so join us every monday wednesday and friday at noon eastern standard time and like kelsey was saying for the last five minutes uh thank you for being part of this thank you for watching this is fantastic we couldn't do this without our community so thank you and enjoy your weekend Lunch with the lunch with the